Um, so in this first part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. First of all, do you work or are you a student? Um, I'm a student. What do you like about your school? Well, the first thing I like about my school is that since it's a private international school, um, the campus is much more beautiful than uh, those general public schools around Beijing. So we get a really big playground and we also get um, a lot of really high tech, hard equipment inside the school building. And we have really high quality projectors and things like that to help us learn better. And the second part I like about my school is, I suppose, it's an international school. So we study the IB. And I think that is in some ways better than public school systems in China because it allows us to learn more skills such as critical thinking and collaboration. Now I'd like to talk to you about the topic of relaxing. What do you do to relax? Um, I guess the favorite thing I like to do when I'm trying to relax is I read Harry Potter because I'm a Harry Potter fan. But aside from that, I also like reading all pretty much every other kind of novel and also watching movies. Do you think sports are a good way to relax? Well, I think that actually depends on the intensity of the sport. For instance, if it's like a 10 kilometer running, then personally, I don't think that won't be very relaxing, at least not physically, because your body may be under a lot of stress from all of the extra work you have to do. Um, do you think vacations are a good time for you to relax? Uh, yeah, I think so. It, that is if you don't get a lot of homework assignments during the vacation. <laughs> Um, if you don't get a lot of homework, then you really do have time to just enjoy the view, lie back, and zone out. Um, do you think students need more time to relax? Yes, definitely, yes. Because um, as a high school student that's going, uh, who is going into grade 11, um, I think um, even during holidays and vacations, we have lots of work to do because we have new essay deadlines or lab report deadlines catching on. And uh, I really do think we just need time to completely relax, forget about schoolwork and chill. Now I'd like to talk to you about the topic of car trips. Do you like to travel by car? Well... I guess I would answer both yes and no, because um, I guess traveling by car is relatively more convenient if um, you're going to a like a short term destination. But then traveling by car can also be really uncomfortable because you have to sit in a cramped back seat of the car for hours. When do you travel by car? Um, well, I travel my car on a daily basis when it's school time, like my dad uh, sends me to school, use, uh, drives me to school using his car, and then he also drives me back home. But then I don't really use uh, car travel much during holidays. What is the furthest place you have traveled to by car? Hmm... I suppose the furthest place I've traveled to by car is to um, another province here in China. Like I live right here in uh, Hebei province. And then I once traveled to Henan province on a family trip. Do you like to sit in the front or back when traveling by car? I generally like, uh, prefer to sit in the front better because um, the view is better. And also I can, I feel like I'm in a wider open space because you know, the windshield is much bigger than just the backseat windows. Okay, now I'm gonna give you a topic and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. Before you talk, you'll have some time to think about what you're gonna say. You can make some notes if you wish. The topic that I'd like you to talk about 
is to describe um, an art or craft activity, such as a painting, woodwork, etc., that you made at school. All right, remember you have one to two minutes to talk, so don't worry if I stop you. Can you start okay. speaking now, please? Right, so um, last year I painted um, an artwork at school and it's named The Escape. So the picture is mostly, a, it mostly consists of a girl crawling away on a keyboard um, away from a red-eyed demon. So the keyboard is the kind of keyboard that you get on computers. And I made some uh, minor adjustments to the keyboard. For instance, for the crevices uh, beneath each letter block, I created some multicolored lava to make it look really heated and really dangerous. And I generally felt that uh, this painting was really significant because I wanted this painting to display the issue of cyberbullying. So I used the technique of contrast in my painting and the left side of the painting is supposed to resemble um, a fairy tale like place with green grass and meadows filled with flowers. But the right side, as I said before, is sort of like um, a hellish land full of cracked lava and uh, black blocks of rock. So I wanted um, this picture to represent how big of an impact cyberbullying has on young children. Um, the demon that the girl was trying to escape from represents uh, the cyber bullies and the girl represents young children as victims of cyber bullies in general. So I made this painting by first sketching on a blank piece of paper um, with pencil and then I outlined it using felt marker and in the end I used both watercolor and acrylic paint to color it in. Yes, thank you. Um, did you show that painting to other people? Um, yes. I showed it to um, lots of my classmates for them to give me comments. And of course, my visual arts professor also saw it. And in the end, um, my painting was one of the ones that got tacked up on the wall in the school hallway. Now, I'd like to talk with you a little bit more generally about the topic of handicrafts and art in society. What are some of the more popular or the more, com more common traditional handicrafts in China? Well, I think there are lots of different types, but um, two of these types, which I know of is um, one of, one is called porcelain art in which um, people try to mold a special kind of clay into different shapes. And then you put it into a furnace and after it, uh, cooks in there, I suppose, it comes out as a beautiful vase or whatever else you want it to make. And the other type of art that is more common here in China is um, like a kind of traditional painting style, like we use different paints. It's not exactly watercolor and it's not exactly acrylic, but um, it sort of dissolves in water. And when you, uh, this, kind of Chinese painting style likes using a lot of water in order to color the paper with just a few brush, brush strokes. Um, do you think it's important for children in school to learn about these traditional styles of Chinese art or is it not really that important compared to other subjects? Mm, well, I think it does have um, a significance, but it's like to a lesser extent because of course, um, trying to keep cultural heritage from passing on to future generations is really important or else uh, these beautiful heritages and crafts would be lost. But then in general, from well, what society is like now from my perspective, uh, students still need to focus more on their academic subject in order to um, gain better prospects for their future. 
Um, why do you think sometimes when an artist makes a work of art, it can be really difficult for people to interpret or understand it? Well, I suppose because um, a lot of artists like to use symbols and these symbols might represent what the author is familiar with, but then um, in a different context, for instance, for someone with a different background, then that symbol might represent something else. For instance, um, the painter Dali, he likes using melting clocks in his works, but then some people may interpret it differently, as in like some people might interpret it as a symbol of past mixing with future, like this disorder of time, instead of what he originally wanted to represent. Do you think it's important that the artist knows what he's trying to do? Or do you think that they can express something without knowing what they're trying to do? Um, I generally think it's still important for the artist to know the message behind their artwork because um, we're taught in um, my visual arts class that uh, the message is the core of um, the whole artwork. If an artwork has no hidden meaning beside it for others to interpret, then it's practically useless. Do you think that um, do you think that artwork that is concerned with political meaning, for example, like protest artwork, um, do you think that that type of artwork is the same as other art, or is it different in some way? Well, I think there are both similarities and differences. For instance, and in the side of what things are similar, uh, they both have, um, they both, the artists both want to express different issues behind the art, or only like the political comics or other types of artwork are more related to political issues. But then I guess, that is also the difference in it. Thank you very much. That is the end of the speaking test. So, yeah, I mean, it's basically perfect. There's no real, it's, it's like very, there's a few little things that I can tell you about, but like some of your, especially your vocabulary, like we're talking about Dali and things like that, um, or some of like the, the descriptions of your artwork um, yeah, I mean, it's as good as an, of an IELTS test as probably I've ever heard. So like, it's really, really good. Um, you're not going to get like band nine, but you can get just below that with a, with a test like that. There are a couple little things. So like at the very beginning, when you're saying, you know, I'm a student, well, the first thing I like about our schools, yeah, this answer, you don't want to be like too, too long because okay. these questions, these first two questions are kind of like, you know, you can, add a, you can add a little bit of detail, but you don't want it to be like super detailed. So something like, you know, I'm a student, I'm going to this IB school in Beijing and whatnot, you know, just like a little bit, like one or two sentences and then same okay. thing, like one or two, don't go on for too long. But I mean, it's not a problem. It was because your timing was like totally fine in part one anyway. So it didn't end up being an issue really. So it's just a minor thing. Um, is it since it's a, yeah, the most general, it sounds quite like, it sounds quite elitist, right? Like, <laughs> as you're saying, it's like, then like the poor commoners in like Beijing, um, then the general public schools. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so it sounds quite elitist. You can say like, not to come off as too elitist, but everyone wants to go to a good school, right? Um, a lot of really high tech, you said hard equipment? Oops. Um, just like, like I, you might just mean like a lot of really nice facilities. Yeah, like I guess it's a, a mix up with a Chinese term I know. Yeah. You know, in, in like the computers. Yeah, I wanted to say like the hardware, I guess, the computers and the display screens and the tablets. Yeah. Yeah, all that's, I mean, that stuff is really good. Yeah, like the computer hardware, like our computer, you can say like our computer room or uh, our computer hard, hardware is a little bit strange. Yeah, like you could say our computer hardware, like our computer room is like, you know, top of the not, um, top notch or state of the art uh, to help us learn better. Yep. To, yeah, like I said, a little bit too long. So the IP, yeah, all that's really good though. 
uh, I guess, uh, yeah, my favorite thing uh, I like to do is, yep, yeah, aside from that, I also like reading pretty much every other kind of novel and also watching, yeah, so no mistakes. Yeah. And good length of answer. You added a little bit more detail on some of these, so it's really good. And anytime you have an opportunity like this one, you know, I think it also depends on the intensity of the sport. If it's like 10 kilometer, like a 10 kilometer race, usually we call that a race. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, from all the extra, yeah, a lot of stress from all the extra work, from all the extra, from all the extra work is more like the exertion you have to do. Exertion is like exerting your body. So putting a lot of work in. Okay. The exertion you have to do. Long distance running. Yeah, we call that long distance running. But yeah, really specific vocabulary. It's just great. That's if you don't get a lot of homework assignments. Yep, zone out. Again, excellent vocab, really strong. And yeah, anytime, I mean, always feel free to kind of just like go off on anything you want to talk about if you feel that you can get out some examples of really good vocab or whatever. Um, okay. Always take that opportunity. And then sometimes if you feel like maybe I don't, I don't think I'm going to be able to say that much good here, then it's fine. You know, just give a short answer. You can kind of okay. gauge it yourself. But I think actually like your level of vocabulary is so high that you should be able to do it with pretty much any question. Who is yeah going into or entering? Yeah, both those are okay. Uh, I think even during holidays or vacations, I really do think, yeah. So like, this is good when you can use this, your intonation for your pronunciation. Like I really do think, so that's good when you can do that. You can stress it even a little bit more because that shows off that you're able to use your pronunciation to communicate meaning. So a lot of students are like very flat when they talk, but if you can say like, I really do think, you know, that okay. shows that like there's meaning in the way that you're using your pronunciation. And that's how you get really, that's like the difference between like band eight and like band nine for pronunciation, you know, when you can say, oh, I really do think we just need time to completely relax. Okay. You know, you can you convey a little bit more meaning with the pronunciation. Um, so that's good. I guess I would answer it. Yeah, this, this is really good when you say stuff like that, because it's like very nuanced and complex. So that's really good. Yeah, relatively more convenient. That's excellent. If you're, yeah, you can say if it's a short, short term destination, or we don't really say short term, you can just say if it's a short trip. Okay. Or if it's just around the corner, if it's not that far away, or if it's like a quick, a quick drive. Okay. To in a cramped back seat, car for hours. Yep sit in or squeeze into all that's yeah that's all good though well i travel by car on a daily basis when it's school time time for school school time is fine. <laughs> my dad drives me to school we don't say really using this car just like in his car okay and you can also say it's like in our car because it's like the family car right uh. car. and that's if your dad like says it's just his car <laughs> i don't really use car i don't really um travel by car yeah exactly travel much by car holidays or during holidays yep yeah it's so like no mistakes there it's all fine i generally prefer to sit in the front not better but more you can say i prefer to sit in the front more or you can just say okay. i prefer to sit in the front uh i feel like i'm in a wider open space yeah yeah like really specific vocabulary about the windshield and you can see out of it and everything so like that's excellent um, yeah, really specific. So, um, and yeah, this one is just like amazing, right? Like it's a really amazing answer. You've got like incredible level of detail and vocabulary with it. Last year I painted, yeah, it's not like really I painted an artwork. It's more like I painted a picture. It's usually what we do. But it's okay. I mean, I painted a picture or I painted, yeah, like I just painted something. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There's no like fancy word for it. Or usually sometimes we say like I did a painting at school. You know, I like did a painting. And it's named, yeah, named is more like called or like and I call. And also you can say more like I call it. A little bit better. It's like I call it this, like I name it this. Oh, okay. 
it mostly consists of a girl crawling away on, yeah, on a keyboard uh, away from a red eye demon. Yep. Uh, yeah, like, like this is really like the crevices beneath these leather. I think you know that like this is really high level vocabulary. You can tell that that's high level, right? <laughs> I think, right? Because that's what you want to try to use. Try to, if you know like this type of stuff, like no other, I've never heard another student in China use words like at this level, really. So um, yeah, if you can use that, then you should do that. So if you know, like, like this stuff that's really specific, if you know that, yeah, just use that all the time. Multicolored lava to make it look really heated. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, look really heated. It's like maybe look really intense. Oh, okay. give, it a, give it a feeling of intensity. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's totally fine the way you said it as well. I uh, generally felt that this, yeah, the left side is supposed to resemble, oh, that's good, sort of like a hellish land. Yeah, you can say landscape. Land is fine too, though. Full of cracked lava, full of black blocks of rock. Yeah, black. You might call them like barren blocks of rock. Barren means that they're kind of like lifeless. You can also say like. Oh, uh, yeah. The demon the girl was trying to escape from represents, yeah, all that's, yeah. And then I outlined it. Yeah, like this stuff at the end is really good, right? Like I outlined it using felt marker. This is like, yeah, this is like, uh, yeah, like extremely, extremely good. I'm trying to think of other ways to say good. Acrylic. Can't believe your pronunciation. Oh, sorry. No. Yeah, so it's like uh, acrylic. 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 Okay. Like that. Okay. Uh, acrylic. 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 Um, and yeah, at the end of part two, the, the examiner is always going to ask kind of like a rounding off question. It'll be something like, have you been back there? Or do you show this to a lot of friends or something like that? So uh, you don't have to give a super long answer for that. Um, but yeah, the answer you gave was totally fine. It wasn't long or short. It was fine. Some students will like go off on a really long answer. You don't want to do that. Okay. Uh, you, it's not really their fault. Like they've just been giving a two minute answer and then they think they should talk more, you know, but so just right. don't do that. It was totally fine the way you handled it. But two of the types I know of, yeah, you can say like, I know best are porcelain. Is it porcelain? Or is it more like, uh, it's like pottery? I oh, mean, yeah, porcelain pottery. is pottery. It's like the same, right? It's kind of, I mean, they're the same kind of family, I guess, right? Porcelain or pottery. Uh, put it into a furnace. Yeah, we actually call that furnace. There's a specific word. It's called a kiln. Okay. But it doesn't right. matter. Furnace is fine. After it cooks in there, yeah. You, there's other some other roads. Yeah, you could use. Usually they glaze it as well. That's like you put a uh -huh. you put something on the outside to make it kind of shiny. Sometimes people embroider it. You know, so you can like you can carve in a picture. Or oh paint yeah. Before paint it before glazing it. I have a friend who's really into that. Um, sometimes they do. You do it on a pottery wheel, or you just do it with the clay. Right? Depends, I guess. Yeah, it depends. Sometimes a pottery wheel or sometimes just using the clay. Um, painting style, acrylic. Yeah, this one is really interesting about the kind of, it's like acrylic and kind of watercolor, you said? It, it's like a different kind of paint. Like what I said was it's not exactly acrylic and it's not exactly watercolor. It's, I don't really know the term in English. Mm. It's not like an ink or something? Um, it's not exactly like ink either. Like it's still in the form of a paste. It's not exactly a liquid, but then you just mix it with a lot of water and then you splash it onto the canvas. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, but that's totally fine. If there's something where maybe there isn't an English word, you never know, right? Maybe it's just a <laughs> Chinese thing. So it, but if you can just describe it and talk about it like that, like that's almost better in some ways because it shows off your ability to describe something, you know, and there may not even be an English word for it. So like, that's really good. Um, I does, but it's to a lesser, yeah, this is really good phrase there. Trying to keep, yeah, it's, usually we say like preserve our oh. cultural heritage or yeah, but you can also say keep it from passing, but then it would be passing away. Keep, you wanna preserve our cultural heritage and pass it on. And pass it on. Usually we say like pass it down or pass it on. Right. 
to the next generation, to other generations is really important. Yeah. Yeah. What society is like now from my perspective. Yeah, this part, there's one, I think I misunderstood one word. You said students, you said don't need to focus. You said they do need to, right? Do need yeah. to focus, right? Yeah. Students do need to focus more on academic subjects for their future these days. Yeah, it's a really competitive in society or something. A lot of ours like to use symbols, what the author is familiar with. Yep. Yeah, it could be like from their from their cultural background, their personal lives, their personal life. Um, might write something else in another context, in another, yeah, context or culture or to another person. Yeah, and this example is excellent. Yeah, so anytime, I've said it before, but anytime you can be really specific like this, keep doing that. Okay. Yep, to know the message of the core of the whole economic because there's already meaning behind it. Yep. It's just superficial, you could say, inside of what things are. Yeah, what things are similar. Oh yeah, so yeah, you can't say in the side of, you can say for, um, you can say for, or like when it comes to, for is the best way actually, just for, for what is similar. You just say for what is similar and then describe that for what is different when it comes to the differences. I think four is just like the best way. A lot of times students will use those fancy phrases, but actually that's just because they don't have other vocabulary like you do. So you don't need to waste your time using like really academic phrases because you have such good vocab. So yeah, I mean, like I said before, there's not a whole lot to tell you other than like a few little things to pay attention to. Just, you know, feel relaxed and easy. Try to give your best answers go into a lot of detail when you can, but you can definitely get, I think for this one, you would probably get like an eight. Mm. You'd either get an eight or an 8.5, I think, right? So, but yeah, I mean, I'm not sure exactly what they would do, but yeah, I mean, you could definitely get, you could almost get a band nine, but there'd be a few too many little mistakes that would just get you marked down from band nine. Mm. 